Life in Color, a podcast about our world today through the voices of two women of color. Today's podcast will cover the topic of social media trends and cultural appropriation. So, in media, you find lots of examples of cultural appropriation uh, through, like, social media trends and stuff like that. Um, for those of you who don't know, cultural appropriation is when members of a majority group adopt culture elements of a minority group in an exploitive, disrespectful, or stereotypical way. So, some examples of cultural appropriation that are seen is, like, for Halloween, a lot of costumes tend to be cultural appropriation, um, football teams, and, like, white people at festivals wearing, like, American head, Native American headdresses, um, and, like, the list goes on and on. And I feel like it is something that is, like, very, like, I know it's been seen, like, there have been, like, a lot of hate and especially, like, what is considered, like, professional and, like, in the workspace and, like, women who have box braids or dreadlocks or, like, any other hairstyle that's not, like, straight hair, like, perfectly curly hair, like, people, they have, like, res- like been told, like, they're, it's inappropriate for work or been, like, forced to cut their hair, especially like, in sports games, like, there have been instances where, like, men basketball players who've had, like, dreadlocks or, like, um, like, any, like, hairstyle, like, they've been told to, like, cut their hair, or, like, I know, like, some girls who have played basketball, like, were told that they had to cut their braids because they weren't allowed to play with them, and just, like, things like that, like, where, like, they're spending so much time on making their hair look like that, and, like, also just, like, that is, like, it's, it's just the discrimination that they're facing because of their hair. And I feel like being told that you can't wear your hair like that, or you have to cut it, to, like, be able to do something that you really want to do doesn't necessarily make sense because you should be able to, like, like, sports teams and stuff should be able to kind of, like, conform to you and what you need. Yeah. Yeah. And then also just, like, when white people do it, like, it's, like, it's not needed for their hair. It's, like, it's just also just, like, disrespectful. It makes it fall out as well. So it's, like, A lot of the times when, like, a black person tells a white person not to wear, like, box braids, it's, like, it can be me, like, helping you. Because it will make your hair fall out because it's not meant for straight hair texture. It's meant for, like, textured hair, and straight hair doesn't really have a texture. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, kind of, like, going on to something, um, you know how in at least, like, in the makeup industry right now, kind of, like, the Asian eyes, like, the fox eyes is a really, like, big thing, and people don't necessarily seem to, like, see a problem, like, people who are doing it don't seem to see a problem with it, but I feel like the problem more comes when, like, people are discriminated on, like, because of their natural, like, eye shape, and then there are other people who are, like, forcing their eyes to look this way. Yeah. Um, so, like, if you don't know what the Asian eyes trend in, it's, like, so it started on TikTok, um, and it, it was makeup artists showing people how to make their eyes more slanted upwards by adding eyeshadow to the corner of your eye to slant your, your eye to the bridge of your nose. And it, like, makes the eyes kind of, like, point up at the end. And, like, it's, like, a side, like... For a long time, like, Asian people have, like, had people come up to them and, like, go like this. And, like, it's, like, you're literally doing that trend, but, like, in a very offensive way. And, like, a lot of Asian people have, like, just been criticized on their eyes and just, like, any, like, in just many different types of ways. So it's, like, like, oh, but now that, like, you're making it a trend and you're making it, like, popular and like now it's okay but it wasn't okay then like it was something people just made fun of constantly and like like people would just like try to not get like have that and so it's like the like switch from being it's like oh like let's make fun of this to like oh now everybody wants it like which can kind of go on to like um like the fake tanning and stuff so, um, you know,
know, a lot of black people, they were, like, discriminated on because of their skin color. And now, um, like, spray tans and, like, fake tans are really, like, big within, like, the white community. And it's, you know, people making their skin darker because they think it makes them look more appealing. But to people who have naturally darker skin, we've experienced racism because of it. So I feel like that's also something, like, you know, if you, everybody gets tan, you know, like, naturally tan in the sun. So if you want to, like, spray tan, fake tan, that's fine, but I feel like there's a point where it becomes so excessive. Like, there's this trend on TikTok, I don't know if you've seen it, um, if it's like, is this person black or is their fake tan just too much? Yeah. Have you seen any of that? I have not seen that, but I've, like, heard about it. Yeah. And just, yeah. And a lot of the times, if you have to ask, if you can't tell, then there's something wrong with it. Yeah. And then also, like, going back into, like, the media, like, there have been a lot of, like, movie stars or, like, just star, like, famous people in general who have been accused of, like, blackfishing. And um, blackfishing is, like, when white public figures, influencers... Um, and the like, do everything in their power to appear black, and that was a quote from Juana Thompson, and it's just like, like you're saying, like, it's like, it's taking something that people have been criticizing, and like, people who have dark skin have really, have like, um, experienced so much hate, and like, just so much violence for that, and like, now, because like, stars started doing it, like, or famous people started doing it, like, now everybody wants it, and it's just... But this also kind of reminds me of when, like, the Black Lives Matter movement was, like, at its, like, height and right after, like, George Floyd's murder when you would see people who had been blackfishing in the past, they were also the ones who weren't necessarily, like, sticking up for black people during the movement. And that really shows how it's, like, people will take what they want from, like, from, like, the black community, but it's, like, they have the best of both worlds in a way. Like, you take Mm -hmm. the good parts of, like, the black community, but then you don't have to experience, like, the racism and, like, the hate that we get. Yeah, and, like, I guess that similarly is not, like, the right term, but, like, um... Like, the same time, like, the Asian eyes trend was going on, like, it was the beginning of the coronavirus, where, like, during the coronavirus, especially, like, in 2020 and leading into 2021, and still now, like, a lot of the Asian community, especially, like, older people were receiving so much hate and violence, like, there were many accounts of, like, white people going into Chinatowns across, like, the U.S. and just, like, shoving elderly people into the street. It's like, why? Why do that? It's not, like, so it's like you're doing this makeup trend, but then, like, there are all these people that are getting, like, hurt, like, vi- like they're getting shoved into streets or getting murdered or getting killed and, like, or, like, getting beat up, but, like, you don't care. Like, it's just, like, it's just a detachment from, like, the people who you're taking these trends from and not caring about them is just, like, mind-blowing and like it also blows my mind and i remember saying something like this like in like march of 2020 or like 2020 i remember saying something about this um it's like the people who take like from our communities kind of they they probably have idols enough people that they look up to that are asian or that are black but they don't seem to think of it that way yeah like they just seem to think of them as like a glorified, like, a, a white person that's not white. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They just, yeah. Um, I, I don't know, I feel like this trend of, like, taking, like, like, white people just pick and choose what they like about other people, and, like, that's what they want. And, like, you see it in, like, almost every single trend that has become popular with, like, the BBL and, like, like, the Kylie lip, like, Kylie Jenner lip tan, like, it's just all of these, like, aspects of the, like, beauty of other cultures that, like, originally in America weren't seen as beautiful and as, like, attractive, that, like, the minute white people were, like, no, that is attractive, and everyone else was, like, yeah, now we're gonna take 
having like a big butt as like attractive whereas before it was like seen as like not attractive and like not desirable and it's just like it's just that's like i don't know yeah and bbls are like they're really dangerous it's one of the most dangerous surgeries that you could get done to your body and it's like black people and not even just black people people who had like a curvier body type even like a couple of years ago were much more hated on than they are now and the majority of like those people were black women but now it's like everybody is getting a bbl and they're traveling to like different countries especially countries in south america to get bbls which are so dangerous and they're doing it to their bodies when just a few years ago like in the 2010s like you wanted that like stick like skinny like figure and now everyone wants to like hourglass like big boob big butt figure and like with the tiny waist but like that just wasn't like that wasn't in 10 years ago and now it's in and now people are doing it because it's a trend but um Vox said that people who, like, two women who had gotten BBLs done after their surgery were happy with it for a while, and then they started to experience some body dysmorphia, which, like, I don't understand why this is such a big trend when body dysmorphia is a real thing, because you're completely changing your body when you get a BBL. Like, the fat that is on your stomach is going into, like, your thighs and your butt and it's changing your body type completely and it's you have to go through that long surgery you can't sit for like a while you have to go through like a bunch of different things to keep your body in the shape like that the bbl made it and i feel like that's so much to go through for a trend if you really want your body to look like that that's one thing but there are like there are definitely people who have reached there by working out and i know that everybody's different you know but um it's like there's always going to be somebody who finds you attractive regardless of what your body looks like so if you're doing it just make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons yeah and i mean also like i feel like a lot of these trends like not only are they like cultural appropriation and they're just like not right but also like they're not instilling like body positivity and like there are some people who will never, like, have the perfect, like, hourglass figure, or, like, they, like, um, and, like, even if they do get BBLs, like, they don't always stay, like, they can go away because, like, the fat in your body, like, just doesn't grow, it just dies, and so it's, like, they don't, like, even if they're not successful, it's always, like, you're also marketing such, like, beauty trends that don't even, like, some people cannot even achieve, no matter, like, how hard they try, like, they're just sometimes just not achievable, And just, like, they just set such a bad example for, like, women wanting to look a certain way for society versus them, like, wanting to look a certain way for themselves. And it's just, like, I don't know. I feel like that's just so, like, unhealthy in our, like, world and society. And that also kind of goes on to the Kylie Jenner look, like, challenge because I don't remember if anybody who's watching this saw the um, videos of the trend when it was first going around, but... People would basically get, like, a shot glass and you would put it around your lips for, like, 30 seconds or however long it was. And then when you took it off, when you took the shot glass from your lips, they would have been swelled up and be really big because, um... Like, pressure. Yeah, because of the pressure. But Kylie Jenner, at first, never admitted that she got lip injections. So people were doing this to get fuller lips like she had but also that's like fuller lips is something that is very prominent in the black community and it's also something that was kind of hated on until Kylie Jenner and I feel like her doing that kind of took away from the beauty of the black community and I'm all for like make like if you want plastic surgery, if you want fillers, whatever you want, if it makes you happy, yeah. go ahead and do it. But I feel like something about, like, being a person who has a lot of followers and a famous person 
you have like kind of a duty to tell your followers like if you got plastic surgery because the Kylie Jenner challenge was really hurt like it did damage to people it wasn't safe at all it's not something that you should do you shouldn't like stop the blood flow somewhere so it like yeah I know like I mean it like it resulted like in if you like you're using a shot glass like you're creating so much pressure in the shot glass like they just shatter and then you can like get it glass in your eye you can get them like you're on your face like it's already such a dangerous like place that you don't want to hurt your face so it's just like so counter to like it just doesn't help and I just like going off of what you're saying like she has such a young like a strong influence for like so many young girls and it's just like just admit that you like it like I mean I don't like, wait, I don't know if she actually got lip fillers or not, but, like... She admitted it after um, the challenge had become, like, a big thing, but it was already so prominent that her admitting it couldn't stop yeah. anything because now everybody just wanted to try the challenge. Yeah, and it's just, like... Like, just admit it. Like, it's, like, it's not harming anyone if you just say, like, that's what you did. And, like, you're probably saving a lot of people from, like trips to the ER because they had a shot glass shatter in their face but I feel like like, it is kind of society's problem in a way because I feel like one of the main reasons as to why people get plastic surgery is because either like they don't feel comfortable in their own bodies or they have people telling them that they don't look like good and I feel like there there are always going to be people who hate on you no matter what and then there will be famous figures like Kylie Jenner, for example, who changes her body because of it, and now her followers all want to do the same thing. And it's just a repeating cycle because there are always going to be people who just want to hate on everything, and I feel like people shouldn't take the hate into consideration as much because you should just do what you want to do for your body regardless of what other people are saying. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, that's a big thing is like, just praising yourself in the way that you look and just accepting that and not being sucked into all of these trends and trying to change yourself because of, like, the way, like, other people want you to look. Yeah. Um, also, blackface. Um, blackface is... For those of you who don't know, it's when people paint their, white people paint their face black to, like, imitate, um, a black person, and this, um, it's still a very big issue. People wouldn't think that this is as big of an issue as it is, but, like, there are people who have done it, have been photographed doing it, and still nothing has happened to them. Like, for example, Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau has pictures of him with his face painted black and I think I don't remember what it was for it was like for some party or something and it was more socially acceptable back then but he's still the prime minister he's still very loved nothing happened to him really other than like a short amount of backlash from social media yeah how do you feel about I know this one is really hard because She's like, okay, can we, okay, can we talk about, like, Pocahontas for a second and how Disney portrayed her? And Mulan. And Mulan, yes. How Disney portrayed (laughs) both, I was thinking Pocahontas because Halloween costumes, a lot of times people will dress up as Pocahontas for Halloween, not realizing, like, (laughs) that it is cultural appropriation. You shouldn't do that. And it also has such, like... A past that they definitely don't know about. Yeah. I mean, Pocahontas, so, like, let, let's put out the baseline of the story of Pocahontas, the Disney version, is not the story that's the actual truth. Like, Pocahontas was a real person. John Smith, or whatever his name yeah. was, was a real person. But their story is not correct. The like, Disney that is story not the history. shows them that Pocahontas runs away with him. She falls in love and with him. And that they were the same age. Yeah. They were not the same he age. Was Pocahontas like, was, like, 12, and he was, like, in his 20s, like... He was a grown man. It was very... She was, like, 10. She was... She was not, um... 
she was prepubescent. <laughs> a young child. <laughs> and he was a, like, grown man. And, yeah, it was not good. It's not a good story. Um, so, the true story of Pocahontas is that she was a Poetan woman who had helped foster the peace between the, um, colonists from England and the Native Americans by becoming friends with some of the settlers in Virginia at the Jamestown Colony. Um, so she eventually ended up marrying one of them, who was John Roll. Um, so Pocahontas was brought to a different English settlement as a captive where she converted to Christianity and changed her name to Rebecca. So this takes away from, like, the Native American culture by, like, presenting this story, like, as a Disney version, showing that she went willingly, she fell in love, where the majority of the things that she had to do were, like, transactions in a way to, like, mm-hmm. save her life and her people's life. Yeah, and also, like, it wasn't, like, mentioned in the film, but, like, just, like, the fact that she, like, converted to Christianity and, like, changed her name, like, it, like, it just proves to so, like, she was really just trying to, like, fit in and just try to, like, protect herself a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, so that is definitely, um, that, like, that story has a lot of really important background, especially for, like, Native American culture, so that's one of, like, a really, one of the main reasons why you should not wear a Pocahontas Halloween costume, just because it is considered cultural appropriation because of what she went through due to the colonists, but, um, another Disney character... Well, also, before you say that, like, even, like, like, even the Pocahontas costumes, though, aren't, like, what she would have worn. Like, they're very, like, they're either, like, sexualized versions or they're just, like, not historically accurate. They're more whitewashed versions, in a way. So it's, like, not even, like, like, respectful in a way. And it's not, none of it is historically accurate either. Yeah, so. so it's, like, it wouldn't even be, like the right thing to wear if you were trying to copy it but then you should you should just take from here's here's a here's a little lesson just don't dress up as pocahontas yeah (laughs) just don't just don't do it okay and then also like another movie we mentioned was like mulan and like it's not horrible it's but it's also one of those cases where like you shouldn't. Just don't do it. It's not like, like, I don't know the exact historical accuracy of the outfits and all of that, but, like, it's probably not that accurate, and, like, just some of the representation of the characters in this, like, the film just, like, wouldn't be accurate to the times, if we're being honest. Like, I don't know. Just, like, the father, like, wouldn't be that understanding. Which I guess is a, I don't know. I just, like, I don't think it's, like, an accurate representation of, like, just... It's ooh, not... Like, she... Mulan made it look very easy to pull off what she accomplished. Yeah. Which is historically inaccurate. Especially for a woman to be able to do, like all of that in the way that Disney portrayed it. Yeah. And just, like, like, I guess, like, when you see, like, characters from Mulan, you tend to see a lot of the, like, um, matchmaker. And I will say, it's not funny. It's offensive. When people, like, do the, like, mustache thing and, like, say, like, Fa Mulan and, like, the way that she says it. Like, it's not funny. It's really not. And, like, you make fun of this matchmaker, but, like, like, I mean, in any, most histories that you look at in general, like, there are, there was some sort of matchmaker in these communities and stuff like that. But it's also, like, like, yes, they made it funny and all that, but, like, these people were literally telling girls, like, this is who you're gonna marry. Like, this is who you're gonna spend the rest of your life with. And, like, this is the best decision for your family and for you, like, 
and it was really like very I don't know, it's just like it's it's not funny to make fun of it and like also like like we said it was Pocahontas like just don't dress up as Mulan like it's just like not probably it's not appropriate it's not like accurate and just like it's not okay like just don't and there like there are a lot of things that you can dress up as like from different cultures that isn't considered cultural appropriation like let's if you wanted to dress up as a like historical figure that's also a person of color you can do that and still like be respectful about it yeah like there are ways that you can do that but it's a lot harder just because like you have to make sure that you aren't being disrespectful to any like any group of people yeah and it's also like when it comes down to it it's also like not only like about what you're wearing but it's also how you act while you're wearing this like you don't want to like dress up as like i guess no one would do this but like you don't want to dress up as rosa parks and then start like being just very disrespectful and like just just acting not appropriate like because that's just you're disrespecting yourself but you're also disrespecting like the costume and like you're also disrespecting like the person who wore that like who you're disrespecting the person you dress up as who is an important historical figure and did like a significant amount for um the civil rights movement and for black people in america so no matter what you dress up as it's really important if it is a historical figure to know like the history of it so you're aware like of the things that you can and cannot do while you're dressed up as that person yeah and then also like even like out like outside of the context of like halloween like in just in general like if you want to wear something that like or look a certain way that is considered like like what like a typical like African American person looks like or like an Asian person or anything like that like just be cautious like just think about what you're doing and like if it is something that you are like altering yourself in a certain way or like wearing a certain type of clothes that like is like traditionally associated with like a certain race like just think about it it's gonna be really hard and like just know that if you do do it you have to be respectful and like if someone asks you not to do it again respect that decision and don't do it again because when it comes down to it like if you're a white person and an asian person or like any person of color asks you not to do something again because it makes them feel uncomfortable like that is the bottom line do not do it again and like if you keep doing it then you're just being disrespectful like to people in general and that goes for more than just skin color too like you can be um like a black person and doing and you could do something that makes a white person feel uncomfortable and if anybody tells you that they feel uncomfortable with whatever you're doing for like it could be for like a cultural reason or not you should just stop yeah. just to be like a decent human being yeah i agree with everything that you just said and so for our viewers out there if you have any questions anything to add or like you want to share your own experiences please let us know down in the comments we love to hear from you um thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week